Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a special cheers to the Forest Park resident who tweets every day that he has faithfully enjoyed a cocktail or a mocktail during this press conference every afternoon since March 26th. So know that your hashtag, Spritzers with Pritzker, has brought a smile to the governor's office staff, and lots of people seem to appreciate you tweeting the drink recipes, too. So thank you. Well, as of today, it's now been one full calendar month since March 9th, the day that I issued a disaster proclamation so that we could fully respond to all that has happened. Since then, we've needed to close down our restaurants and bars and limit large gatherings. We took schools to remote learning. We instituted a stay-at-home order following the best advice available from epidemiologists, scientists, and doctors about bending the curve. We've been building up our healthcare capacity, buying personal protective equipment in bulk, ordering ventilators, adding beds at our existing institutions, calling retired healthcare workers back into service, launching work at alternate care facilities around the state, and ensuring the continuity of supply chains for testing. And on that note, I want to thank Abbott, which informed us yesterday that facilities in our state who are operating with their machines can now be able to access swabs directly from them instead of through third parties. A great development. During the last month, we have experienced tremendous tragedy. We have lost hundreds of Illinoisans, each one a person of immeasurable worth to their families their friends and their communities and to this state. Thousands more are fighting in our hospital systems for their lives and many, many thousands more are recovering or have already recovered at home. This virus's economic impact has uprooted the lives of hundreds of thousands in our state and tens of millions across the nation. Over the last several days, my public updates have been heavily data uh, driven and we will continue to provide data on a regular basis and no doubt we will answer questions about data today as we do every day but today the 32nd straight day that i've stood in front of you to provide an update on covid 19 i want to dedicate a few minutes to highlighting some of the truly incredible organizations around the state who have stepped up in response to this unprecedented challenge. As Dr. Ezeke and I told you yesterday, our rate of rise is looking less and less exponential. That indicates to us that we are in fact bending the curve. There is even some evidence that we may be moving toward a flatter curve, but we need to keep watching the data on a daily basis. Keep in mind our case numbers and the death toll are still growing, and thus our fight must continue. And the data will show that those numbers are growing more slowly, and that's a very good thing. It's all of you, the families and individual residents of Illinois, who are making the biggest difference in our fight against COVID-19. You all are the first line of our protection in your communities in your households and for yourselves. Your individual decisions to help social distance, to not gather in groups, to wash your hands, and to wear a mask outside have resulted in collective action that is saving people from getting sick and being hospitalized. It's been one week since we launched the All In Illinois campaign, and in that week, People from all across the state of Illinois, people around the world with ties to East St. Louis or Macomb or Cairo or Rock Island or Chicago have declared themselves all in for Illinois. In under seven days, the all in campaign has reached more than three million people on social media. And across the state, countless individuals and organizations have come together to fight for things far larger than themselves. 
fighting for the safety of youth care. Aunt Martha's Health and Wellness Center has developed a first of its kind program opening this month designed to give Department of Children and Family Services kids who've been exposed to COVID-19 a safe place to quarantine. Fighting for safe and expansive nutrition access, the Lakeview Pantry, which serves food to people all across the city of Chicago, is serving 82% more individuals than they were before this crisis began. And as a rare pantry with an online market, Lakeview Pantry has expanded capacity for online orders every week. Fighting for our elderly residents, the Department on Aging has supplied $7 million in emergency assistance grants to help meet increased demand for home delivered meals for our seniors. Last week alone, the department processed nearly 1,000 new home delivered meal referrals per day. Fighting for our residents with disabilities, Centers for Independent Living in Lake County and then Mount Vernon have offered more workers, training, and supplies in each of their areas to keep Illinoisans with disabilities safe in their homes. And group homes across the state have displayed hearts in their windows, a message of hope to those on both sides of the glass. Fighting for students and their families, Bella Ease in Adams County is providing dinner and snacks to local residents to supplement the breakfast and lunch that Quincy children receive from their local public schools. Fighting for those needing behavioral health services, Healthcare Alternative Systems has restructured its operations to expand telehealth and phone counseling options for those seeking services to battle addiction or work through mental health needs. Fighting for our healthcare workers, Lewis and Clark Community College in Godfrey gathered up critical PPE from their health sciences program and donated hundreds of boxes of masks and gloves, gowns and hand sanitizer to local hospitals. Fighting to provide services and housing for the homeless, La Casa Norte continues to help individuals throughout DuPage, Kendall, Cook, and Kane counties find permanent shelter for themselves and for their families. Fighting for small businesses, the communities of Southern Illinois came together to launch Marion United, a live stream benefit featuring local artists, musicians, and community leaders sharing hope and encouragement. They raised nearly $200,000 from hundreds of donors, money that will go directly to support local businesses that have been impacted. Fighting for equitable community support, the Latino Policy Conference, the Latino Policy Forum, has worked to ensure early education providers serving essential workers in the Illinois Latino community uh, to make sure that they have the diapers and wipes and formula that they need to support the families they serve. And they're doing the same to ensure fair food access statewide. I could go on, but the point is that all across Illinois, individuals and communities and nonprofits and grassroots organizations have stepped up to meet this moment. I am very, very proud of each and every one of them. And I hope you are too. Know that everywhere that you look, there are helpers. And the truth is that Illinois is home to the kindest and most generous people in the entire nation. One final item. Over 45,000 people have now answered our call to volunteer through Serve Illinois, our State Commission on Volunteerism, or Illinois Helps, our volunteer network of health professionals. If you'd like to join them or learn about other ways that you can volunteer or help, such as donating blood or offering financial support to our COVID-19 relief fund, visit coronavirus.illinois.gov and scroll down to the volunteer opportunities section on the main page. Again, that's coronavirus.illinois.gov. So thank you, and now I'd like to hand it over to our Illinois Department of Public Health Director, Dr. Ngazi Azike, for today's medical update. 